Welcome to the Command Flight Planner tutorial series. In this tutorial we will create an IFR plan from Melbourne to Sydney with a stopover in Albury. In Command Flight Planner IFR and VFR planning follow similar principles and so while this tutorial will create an IFR plan it will also be of interest to those planning for VFR. To begin the plan select the correct flight mode from the drop down menu. In this case we are creating an IFR plan and will need to select the IFR mode. The next step is to enter a departure point. This can be done in several ways including clicking on the map, but for this tutorial we will enter it directly into the plan grid in the lower part of the screen. Click in the waypoint cell and begin to type. We will enter the airport code ML. As you do this the work panel will begin to display matching code options. We can then select the Melbourne option from the Waypoint Selection Panel by double-clicking it. If you are not sure of the airport code, you could start by typing MELB and then select the correct entry from the list. Advance to the next row by pressing the Enter key or the down arrow. Enter SY for Sydney and double-click to select. By pressing the Enter key, you will trigger Command Flight Planner to access its database of stored routes that are updated quarterly with all ATC recommended routes and waypoints. At this point, Command Flight Planner will return the route options for you to select from, or automatically insert the route if there's only one route option. In this case, there is a high level route and a low level route to choose from, or you could choose to fly a direct track. For our plan, we will select the low level route and click on the Use Selected Route button. The program will then populate the grid with all the appropriate intermediary waypoints and nav aids and draw the route on the map complete with waypoints. You may have also noticed that in the plan grid, the altitude column has been filled in. Command Flight Planner is drawing this figure from your nominated preferred global settings. We will look at where these are entered later. Of course these figures can be edited directly in the plan. The map colour coding indicates red for a climb segment, blue for a cruise, and green for a descent segment. The plan currently represents a flight from Melbourne to Sydney, and we would like to stop at Albury. To change the flight plan, simply click on the Albury waypoint in the grid and mark it as a landing point by checking the landing point box. The row will change colour and the map will update to reflect the new landing point with a descent into and climb out of Albury. We now need to nominate departure times for each takeoff. In the planning grid, click on the row for the Melbourne departure and enter a time into the departure time box in the grid toolbar. For this exercise, we'll use a time of 0900 and we'll do the same at Albury using 1100. Returning to the map, you can click on any of the waypoints along the route and the work panel will display further detail. By clicking on the airports along the route, you will see an airport diagram and other information like runway details, frequencies and nav aids. You may also want to view your plan in relation to airspace. Click on airspace in the top menu and you will be able to choose from a selection of map overlays. For our tutorial, we will select the view CTA option. Command Flight Planner offers you the option to view the full details of the charts or limit the detail to the flight levels you are interested in. For example, if you were flying under 10,000 feet, you could enter 10,000 feet in the below box in the CTA dialog box and click display all matching. The relevant CTA details will be drawn on the map. You can zoom in on specific areas of the map using either the zoom button in the corner of the map for small increments or to zoom right in Click on the zoom button in the toolbar and then drag an area over your map. To return to a full view of your plan, click on the view plan button in the top menu. By clicking on the information dots on the map, the work panel will display information about the airspace, like its limits and the controlling authority. To turn off the map overlays, simply return to the airspace tab in the top menu and click clear all airspace displays. You may also wish to view your plan in Google Earth for a more detailed map. To do this, simply click on File in the top menu and then Export to Google Earth. For this function, you will need to have downloaded the Google Earth application to your computer. 
At this point, the plan has a defined route, landing points and departure times, and we have also checked out the airspace and map features. We will now have a brief look at the other functions under the Flight Plan tab. In general, the tabs under Flight Plan in the side menu provide information about specific segments of the plan. Start by selecting a tab under the Flight Plan heading and then the segment you wish to view in the plan grid. The Segment Detail tab provides you with a few details relating to the segment. By clicking on the waypoints in the plan, you can also enter remarks that will be reported in the 18A section of your flight notification. By selecting the Fuel Tanks tab in the side menu and then the Melbourne Waypoint in the plan grid, we can view the fuel tank maximums and fuel on board values. In this case, we are seeing the default values from the main tanks that are set in the aircraft definition being used in the plan. If we move to the Albury landing point in the grid, we can enter more fuel for this segment of the plan. We can also view the fuel usage totals in the Fuel Management tab. In this screen, we can move through all the stages by using the Previous Stage and Next Stage buttons at the bottom of the panel. Moving to the Loading tab for the Melbourne Departure Point, we will see more default values that are set in the aircraft profile. In this case, they are set for passengers and baggage. The figures here would indicate that there are two passengers in each row and some baggage, but of course we can edit these in the plan. We can also use the Passenger Manifest function to enter passenger names and their actual weight. The weight and balance analysis is also calculated. The display is presented both numerically and graphically and indicates the zero fuel weight, takeoff and landing CFG for each flight segment. In this case we are looking at the Melbourne to Albury stage and by clicking the next stage button we can look at the Albury to Sydney stage. This tutorial has covered the most commonly used features when creating a flight plan. Join us in the next tutorials to see how easy it is to access NAPE's wind and weather information and submit a flight notification.